Hello everyone, myself Sabri and I welcome you to our channel Solution Bridge Network and one-stop solution for all your power platform tutorials. Hello everyone. In this video, we're gonna see a detailed step-by-step -step process that you need to follow to write back to the source that is connected to your Power BI dataset from the Power BI service directly. To achieve this, we're gonna use a native visual that is available in the Power BI, which is Power Apps. I would like to give you a disclaimer before I start this video. So this integration was working successfully in the Power BI desktop previously, but currently we are unable to retrieve the column that is getting mapped in the Power BI desktop. So as a workaround, you can create your Power BI report and publish it to the Power BI service. And from the Power BI service, you can start adding that Power BI integration. So if you see, you can note that there is an already a report available called Power Apps Integration. I've connected it to my SharePoint source. So let me edit my report in the Power BI service. You can see I have one table and I have a few list of columns. I have added a table visual and just mapped the employee ID name, department, date of joining in, date of exit. Now let's add the Power App visual, arrange it accordingly. And you just add the key column that is the unique identifier column which you have it in your table. So it is employee ID for me. So let's add this employee ID. And once after adding the employee ID, you can see that the Power Apps is looking for the available environments. So you can select the desired environment and click on create new. If you have already an existing app, what you can do, you can click the choose app option and it will list the apps available in this environment. You can select if that matches your criteria. So you can click on create new now. This will automatically takes you to the Power App Studio where you can start customizing your application. One thing to be noted here is you need to make sure that you are turning on the Power BI embedding option that is available in your environment settings. So I'll give you the steps that you need to follow to check this in your screen. Let's wait for the app to get loaded completely. Now you can see that the app gets auto created with one gallery and that gallery is connected to the Power BI integration data and I can see all the columns available. So if you select this text, you can see this is this item dot employee ID. Currently, we doesn't need this gallery. So we'll go ahead and delete and start creating our form. So let's go ahead and insert a text label and add a heading first. So I'd like to insert the text label here, call it as employee information. Make it a center aligned and do some formatting changes. I would like to add a plus icon as well. So let me add a plus icon and this will be used to add some new inputs to the form. So go ahead and change the color which makes it visible in the header. And now it's time for us to add the actual form. So let's go ahead and add an edit form place it accordingly and connect it to the data source. So just placed it. If you just go to the data source, click on here and you can just type it as SharePoint. As I told earlier, this is a SharePoint list. So let me select the SharePoint and here you will see all the list of SharePoints that you have access to. Select the SharePoint which you have the list hosted. So it's in Power Apps and my list is employee information right back to Power BI. So let's click on connect. You can see employee name, date of joining, employee ID and attachments are added. So attachment is not required for me. So let me remove it and let's arrange that employee ID above the employee name. And you can see one column which is missing here, which is department. So let's go ahead and click on add field, select the department and add. And make sure that the department is placed next to the employee name. Now our form is ready. So now, if you can see here the default form mode is edit so if it is edit we need to make sure that the item that is getting selected in the table available in the power bi should be available here for modification so let me go to the item property of this form we need to make sure this is getting tagged to that item that is selected in the table visual so here we will use a lookup command so we need to look up our source which is employee information right back to power bi where the employee id is equal to so the first employee ID available in the 
power bi integration data so it's power bi integration dot data and if you close the bracket and give it out it will just call all the ids that got mapped in the power bi visual in the power bi so just select the employee id and click on close immediately after closing you will see that the first employee is getting autofilled. Now let's add a button and place it accordingly and make sure this is used to submit the form. So submit form of form one. And this add button, we'll just use it to make sure that the form is getting converted to a new form. So let's say new form of form one whenever the form is getting submitted successfully we need to give a notification to the user and that notification should be configured in the on success property of the form so let's select the form go to the on success property and here you say notify submitted successfully and this is of type notification success so let's say notification type dot success and show it for 3000 milliseconds. We are getting the error. I think there is a small typo here in the notify. Let's correct it. So it's N-O-T-I-F-Y. Now we have made all the customizations. So let's save it. It's asking for the name. So I'll save it as right back to Power BI dataset. Right back to Power BI dataset and click on save. Once this is saved, make sure you are publishing the app. So let's wait for it gets saved. So publish it now. Once this is published successfully, you can just navigate back to your Power BI report so you can see that your app is getting auto loaded. So it's asked for the permission. So click on allow. And this gives a notification here it's in the developer environment that's fine so whenever you select the id check if it is getting auto filled so let's select two you can see krishnan finance is getting selected three shweta is getting selected so now let's click on plus and see if we are getting a new form yes there you go and we can add in the information so let's save this and go to the view mode so go to the workspace and select the report. Let's click allow. Now you have the information. So if you can see, we have five informations already available. So let's say, let's try adding in one more information. I click on plus. I give the employee ID as six, employee name, as Karthi and the department as IT and I can give the date of joining as today and let's click this button so you can see that submitted successfully we need to make sure this button is named accordingly which we will just do it in the edit section now so it says the data submitted successfully but still we are not able to see any information here you might already be aware that since this is being a SharePoint list, we may not be able to use the direct query mode. And since it is in the import mode, we need to make sure that the data source is getting refreshed. So let me open a new tab. Let's go to the Power BI. Navigate to the required workspace and we make sure that we are refreshing once. So here, let's go to the workspace. It's in my workspace. And now let's refresh this. So I have clicked on the refresh. This has started the refresh. Probably once this refresh is completed, we'll just go back to the report. It's completed. We'll just open the report now. Now you can see that the item six, what we have added is currently available in. Let's go to the edit view of this power app and we need to make sure that that's getting saved. So Go to the edit report, click here and click edit. So this will open a pop-up again and it will just connect you directly to the Power App Studio where you can just make the modifications. So let's wait for the app to get loaded. 
first we'll give a proper naming convention to this button so we call this button as save button so whenever the form is getting submitted and if it is successful we need to make sure that we are refreshing the data set to achieve that we use power automate so let's go to the power automate section and click create a new flow so this will give you a pop-up where you will be able to select it from the template or you will be able to create a new flow from the scratch let's start creating the flow from a scratch so let's say create from blank it's a two-step flow let's say we need to refresh the data set on the success of the property so we'll say the name of the flow is refresh data set in power bi and this is a trigger which says that this will be getting triggered from the power apps we need to add a new step and here you can look out for the power bi connector so type power bi and you will be able to find the power bi connector select that and in the accent section just look out for refresh so you say refresh a data set select it and it will automatically create a connection to your power bi so let's wait till it gets created so it's get created so once it is successful you will see an option to select the workspace and the data set so select the workspace it's in my workspace and if you select the data set this automatically gets filtered based on the workspace selected i have only one data set so you can see the power bi integration so you can just save it once this is saved the pop-up automatically closes and the flow what you have created will be available here we need to make sure this flow is getting called if and only if the form is getting submitted successfully so what i'll do i'll again go and select this form let's go to the tree view and select the form and go to the on success property so in the on success property post a notification i would like to call this refresh data set in power bi so let's type refresh and you can see refresh data set in power bi dot run so you just select that and click open close bracket so click on save and click on publish so let's go to the power bi go to the workspace let's reopen the report so let's save this and now let's reopen the report Now you can see the options what we have just renamed is available so let's try entering a date of exit for the employee id one kumar so i'll just give a date of exit as tomorrow and once i click on save you can see that it says data submitted successfully and let's wait for the power bi data set refresh to run once the data set is refreshed successfully you can immediately see that the date of exit is automatically available by this we come to end of this video so here to give a short summarization of what we have done so far so we have added a power up visual to edit and add new records to the existing power bi source and we have used power automate to refresh and this power automate is helpful if and if that source doesn't support a direct query method if you have any questions or clarifications please feel free to post it in the comment section and we will just respond to you as soon as possible thanks for watching subscribe our channel hit the like button and Press the bell icon for our new video alerts.